add the new G orbital or something like that, I can't do that because they won't be familiar with any of this. On the other hand, if I do the same thing in OpenCL, uh, I can do four element vectors using this float four type, and they look a lot more like the original scalar, the CUDA kernels written in a scalar fashion, and the CUDA kernels look almost exactly like the plain C code that we would have on the host. The OpenCL just uh, is, is very similar, but we're, we're using this float four type in a few key places that I've highlighted in green. But other than that, it also looks very similar to the original code. This is a lot easier to understand conceptually, and the code is a, a much easier thing to read than what we had before. And so to me, uh, the ability to, to write this way rather than uh, this way is a big benefit. So th this is another case where even if you don't end up using OpenCL on the GPU, there may be a reason to use it on the host so that you can write in a language dialect that more people would have a chance to be able to follow. And uh, the other, of course, the other benefit of OpenCL is we can run it on a lot of different platforms. And so to give you an example of uh, the relative performance of these different platforms with different people's open, different vendors' OpenCL implementations, uh, and comparing them versus CUDA, you can see the speed ups here. This is the original hand coded SSE, that ugly piece of code I just showed you a minute ago. And then the rest of these are all OpenCL. So OpenCL running on a Mac uh, with Apple's OpenCL implementation. Uh, the CPU, this is another interesting thing. The CPU versions of OpenCL uh, automatically scale across multiple cores. So not only do you get the SSE instructions, but you're also getting scaling across multi-core CPUs for free. So you don't have to write any OpenMP or anything like that. If you run your OpenCL kernel on, on a node, it's going to see all of the CPU cores and it will use SSE. So that's really exciting. That means you have a little bit less code to write if you if you don't have to mix your, your different APIs. And so you can get a pretty good speed up. So this is these are results from about eight or nine months ago, so you have to give the vendors a little slack. All of the OpenCL uh, implementations have improved since then. Uh, so in particular, the ones for the x86 CPUs have gotten a lot better since uh, last year. Do you have an explanation for why switching from the Intel Core 2 Duo, why switching from Scalar to Vec 4 gives you more than a factor of 4? Because it, that has to do with their compilers. So the, vec the four element vectors well, for one, you're getting the SSE, but the other is they are able to somehow uh, do a better job with register reuse. So I guess when they, this has to do with overhead, so they're basically doing four times the number of lattice points per <coughs> trip through this whole loop, and you're all, uh, the, the advantage is you're doing fewer of the overhead operations to get more of the results. So. For one trip through this loop, I'm getting four of those results rather than one, and I guess that the way that works out in terms of the number of registers and everything, it ends up running faster. So you get a super, super linear speed up there. But I, I would blame that on the compiler. In a perfect world, you shouldn't be able to get uh, more than a factor of four from a, a four element vector. But I guess in practice, uh, it's tricky. So, so they do. And. Um, the cell, one thing to note about the cell processor, IBM's implementation of OpenCL from last year did not support the constant memory. And so this is effectively a kernel that's running out of the slow, the slow global memory uh, as far as cell is concerned. But even so, it gets a pretty respectable uh, result relative to uh, a, a more re much more recent Intel chip. So that's pretty exciting. Uh, and then, of course, a, a previous generation Radeon 4870. Uh, this is an older device that uh, I guess it's about a year older than this GPU, something like that. And so that's actually a very good speed up for that older device. Um, and that was with AMD's, uh, one of AMD's first OpenCL versions. So they've gotten a lot better also in the last uh, seven or eight months. And I showed uh, several GTX 285 results. What's interesting then is the, the four element vector kernel runs nearly the same speed on NVIDIA's board. So NVIDIA's board doesn't have, their hardware is not organized into those four element vectors. Everybody else's hardware is. So the fact that you can run a, a, a four element vector kernel 
the same one that I ran on the Radeon and on these others, the fact that that runs with nearly the same performance as the best kernel uh, for the NVIDIA hardware is really encouraging. So that means maybe if, if I'm trying to support all these different target devices, maybe the right way to do that is to write a float for a kernel and only in the case where that doesn't provide adequate performance, I would have to write a, a scalar kernel just for the NVIDIA hardware. But the fact that they do nearly as well, so there's a little bit of overhead there, but not much. Uh, and the other thing that's exciting then too is, uh, really NVIDIA's OpenCL implementation is so good that I, I really have my choice. Do I want to write it in CUDA or, or do I write it in OpenCL? They get nearly the same performance either way. You can see there's as much performance variation between different versions of the CUDA toolkit as there is between OpenCL and CUDA. And so, just to give you an example. And that's it. Any questions? Yeah? I have a question about allocating memory. Is there a routine in CUDA to sort of reallocate or dynamically size up arrays on the fly? Not as far as I know. I don't know that there's a realloc, for example. Um, so probably, you would have to write it yourself, but I mean, basically what you would do is you, you could, you know, one way you could do all that is you could basically allocate a big, basically huge chunk of GPU memory at the outset, and you could write your own allocator that handed out pointers to regions within that, and then you could do that for yourself. So basically you'd have your own memory allocator sitting on top of theirs. But as far as I know, they just have the, you know, the normal allocation and free calls. One of the reasons I think they don't have a reallocation routine is because the GPU, for reasons of the way the, the PCI Express Bus and the DMA hardware work, when they allocate memory, they expect all the pages of GPU memory to be con uh, contiguous and consecutive uh, so that the hardware that does memory copies, these DMA chips that are on the, uh, the host machine, they require these memory addresses to remain in a fixed configuration. And so if you had a reallocation routine, you might have to fiddle around with these pages, and they can't do that. And so it's probably for them simpler just to put it where it's going to be, and if you want to change it, you start over again. So, any other? Okay. So I'll let Jim do the next. So thank you. I want to put my talk after break. Yeah, we could do that.